Welcome to Life in Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and I previously uploaded a video that talked about one drug called remdesivir that could potentially inhibit coronavirus replication uh, and be used to treat patients in the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, today I'd like to talk about one other drug, and uh, using kind of a similar first slide as last time, I'm going to point to the fact that the steps of that a virus takes to replicate are also steps that you can stop during a, with the therapy during, to, to stop a virus infection. The steps of a virus infection are, there's seven of them. We have attachment entry, and so that's getting the virus genome into the cell, into the cytoplasm typically of the cell. And then uncoding is the uh, release the genome from the uh, proteins that it's associated with. Transcription is the act of making mRNA from a virus genome. Turns out coronavirus already has a positive strand single sense RNA and it can act as an mRNA as soon as it gets into the cell. You also need to have a step where you produce different components of the viruses then those components needed to be added together to form new virions. Virion is an infectious virus particle. And then the final step is that you either burst the cell open or uh, viruses could bud, but there's different ways of getting the viruses out of a cell. This is a pretty horrible drawing of a coronavirus, but I just wanted to point out that a lot of the proteins in this virus are given letter names. There's a black line that forms the circle of this virus, and that is a lipid, it's not a protein. So we've got a membrane uh, envelope, a membrane virus, which is called an envelope virus, and so that's indicated by that black line. There's a couple different proteins that are scattered about in that membrane of the virus. The big red ones here are labeled S, which means spike protein. We've got another one blue membrane proteins stuck in that uh, membrane and they're just labeled with an M for membrane. Uh, because we've used up M for membrane, over here we've got a protein called E for envelope. So envelope membrane kind of used uh, similarly when it comes to virus surfaces and you have an envelope and a membrane protein but it just means that they're in the membrane. Okay. So then inside the virus, you have a genome, and it's associated with these green proteins, which are nucleocapsids. So they're labeled with an N there. Sorry if this is kind of small. And then the, the Ns kind of coat the whole DNA, so usually you can't see the DNA. Um, if I had drawn this more accurately, uh, instead the proteins make it so that the DNA is kind of held in a corkscrew shape. Uh, which in science we call that a helix. So that's what we're looking at here. Our story today is going to center on these spike proteins on the surface. So on this next slide I have some images of a virus and I left out most of the proteins. We have the genome in the center, we've got a membrane surrounding it, and then we have this, the spike proteins, the S proteins, shown as well. Uh, the crown of spikes is important for the first two steps of virus replication. That was the attachment and the entry of the virus. I, I purposely use the word crown here because corona means crown. And so these uh, spike proteins uh, under an electron microscope make it look like the virus has a crown on it. Down here, what takes up the majority of this image is a cell that's going to be infected with the coronavirus. I used a black line again to, mem uh, to indicate the membrane of the cell. So the cell has membrane, the virus has membrane, these are lipids, and they can fuse together if the right conditions happen. In a brown rectangle here, I have a protein called ACE2. It's the receptor for uh, coronaviruses, and ACE2 stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2, and that's involved in blood uh, pressure uh, 
things, processes in the body. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you hear about some potential coronavirus uh, therapies that, that were drugs that were originally used for some sort of blood pressure thing. Next, we've got another protein, a purple oval, and it's got a lovely name of TMPRSS2. I never did look up what exactly that stands for, but my guess is that it's a transmembrane protein, so we've got it sitting in the membrane. It's a protease. A protease is a protein that breaks apart other proteins, causes a, a break in another protein. SS probably stands for serines because these uh, some proteases are serine based and that's what this one is. But anyways, we have this protease that can cleave other proteins. So, at the step where the virus makes attachment to the cell with ACE2, you can get this other protein coming into close contact and it's the protease and it's going to start acting on the spike proteins of coronavirus. So you've got cleavage of this spike protein and that is called uh, priming uh, or activation of the spike protein and when it cuts this big protein S in pieces you've got S1 and S2 after it's been cut. At any rate you have receptor mediated endocytosis basically it means that that lipid on the surface of the cell gets kind of pulled in and to the point where it almost like blows a bubble uh, into the cell and you've got a membrane bound vesicle here uh, indicated by the black line and you have the virus now inside the cell I drew a couple more proteins in at this point and these are the blue proteins those proteins are called cathepsins cathepsins spelled like it sounds maybe it's hard to read that but the cathepsins are proteins that are going to be activated once the pH of this bubble drops a little bit. And between the protease activity of the, of the TMPRSS2 protein and these cathepsins, you have full uh, fusion potential and the membrane of the uh, virus will then fuse to the membrane of the vesicle that it is in and the genome can then be released into the, the new, into the cytoplasm of the cell, the fluid of, this, of the main part of the cell. Okay, so that's how it works. And uh, this paper that I'm going to link to talks about uh, a protease inhibitor. It's already been approved for things like pancreatitis, uh, but it cause it is called camostat. And then they used another serine protease inhibitor in the paper called E64D. And the camostat blocks the TMPRSS2, and the E64D blocks the cathepsins. And together, they really did a good job blocking the virus, although it could be that just camostat alone could be effective at stopping coronavirus replication in a human body. So since I've done, this is my second video now, I just want to do a quick comparison of those two drugs that I've talked about before. Last video, episode 32, even though I called it 31, is remdesivir. It blocks a highly conserved protein called the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase of coronavirus. Other viruses have that, like the Ebola virus also has uh, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and, and, and others, and so this drug here might work against multiple viruses. Uh, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase is involved in copying the genome, and if you go back to our seven steps of virus replication, that was step number five. It has been used in people at this point that I know of, and the example there is that it was used on passengers that were on the, crew, the Diamond Princess cruise ship uh, while they were sitting there with their air recirculating and their breathing in coronavirus, so maybe it saved some lives there, but uh, I guess further studies will need to be done to figure out if that actually had a good effect. The video here that we talked about was Camostat. It blocks the activation of the spike protein, so the spike protein needs to be cleaved 
into, from S to S1 and S2. It, it blocks, uh, it acts, but it acts on a human protease. So this drug d doesn't act on the virus itself. It acts on human proteins, which is good because the spike proteins of different coronaviruses, they vary uh, in uh, amino acid identity which means if you line them up and compare their sequence, the sequence identity is, is fairly low. It's not like the RNA-dependent polymerase where it was highly conserved. So it's good that it acts on a human protein instead. Uh, coronavirus entry is a multi-step process and the camostat blocks the priming of the spike protein, which I guess is a bit redundant with my point one. And then any other proteases that uh, th uh, there's a question here, are there any other proteases that could act like TMPRSS2? And if that's true, this camostat might be able to block this particular protease, but then again it's possible that the human, uh, the human cells make a different protease that could be redundant with this, and so time will tell whether this camostat will be effective and it really hinges on whether you can reach therapeutic levels to block the coronavirus spike activation and whether there are other proteases that can do that same job that Camostat did. Alright, so there's two, uh, two different talks on molecules that can inhibit the replication of coronavirus, particularly this SARS uh, coronavirus 2 that is causing COVID-19. Like and subscribe or not.